In this short video, we're going to do a review of power series with an emphasis of what we need to know to find power series solutions of differential equations. So remember that a power series is an infinite series. It has coefficient Cn and uh, corresponding to Cn, there is a power of x minus a to the n. a is called the center, so we call this a power series centered at x equals a. A few important facts. Uh, we say that the power series converges provided that the sequence of partial sums converge. And a an power series has an interval of convergence and a corresponding radius of convergence. There's only three possibilities. You could have it converge at only one point that is at the center x equals a. And in that case, we say the radius of convergence is zero. And the second case is that you have a bounded interval of convergence, which is centered at x equals a, and it has a radius of r. You may or may not include the endpoints. And then finally, the interval convergence could be all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. And then we make a technically incorrect statement, but just to make the uh, analysis simpler, we just say that it has an infinite or r equals infinity, or it has an infinite radius of convergence. Uh, we may need to use the ratio test to test for convergence. Remember, with the ratio test, you take the ratio of consecutive terms and let that limit go to infinity. And uh, if that limit then uh, is exists, it's a value L, which is less than one, then the series is absolutely convergent. If the uh, value of L is greater than one, or if the limit is infinite, or if the limit does not exist, the series will diverge. And then uh, if uh, L equals one, then we can't use the ratio test to draw any conclusion. We, we just need to use something else. Uh, so let's look at an example. We'd like to find the interval convergence of this power series centered at zero, the coefficients are one over n plus one times two to the power of n. So we'll use the ratio test and we'll simplify that and take the limit as n goes to infinity. We come up with one half absolute value of x. For convergence, we want that to be less than one, which would mean the absolute value of x would have to be two. So certainly we on the open interval from negative two to two, do we include the endpoints? Well, we just have to check those endpoints individually. So if I check the right endpoint where x equals two, I put two in the place of x in the original power series, that means the two to the n divided by two to the n is one. And I'm just left with one over n plus one, and if I write out the first few terms, I can see that this is the famous harmonic series, which is divergent. So x equals two, the right endpoint is not part of the interval of convergence. Checking the left endpoint, if I have the negative two in parentheses, negative two to the power of n divided by two to the power of n, that gives me in parentheses, negative one to the power of n, making it an alternating harmonic series, and that is convergent. So we include the left endpoint, exclude the right endpoint. Here's another example. Uh, we like to find the interval of convergence of x minus two to the power of n over n factorial. And uh, using the ratio test, we find that the limit is zero as n goes to infinity for all values of x. So that means that the interval of convergence is all real numbers. And finally, here we have a power series centered at negative three uh, and the coefficient is n factorial. So just by looking at this, 
uh, we should be able to determine that for every value except negative three, since the coefficients go to infinity as n goes to infinity, um, then only when x equals negative three could we have convergence. Don't even need the ratio test here. And so this converges at only one point at x equals negative three. Uh, some more important facts. A power series defines a function. The domain of the function is the interval of convergence. And then here's a property that we will use throughout our study of power series solutions of differential equations, that the uh, sum of power series equals zero if and only if all the coefficients are equal to zero. All right, I guess I should be a little bit careful here. If, when, yeah, when R is not equal to zero, that's a true statement. All right, and then we have this phrase analytic at a point. Uh, so formally it it's means that uh, uh, the function f of x can be represented as a power series centered at x equals a with a non-zero radius of convergence. Uh, really, uh, for our study of differential equations, it really means uh, that f of x does not have a uh, jump or infinite discontinuity. So it does not have a jump or a vertical asymptote at x equals a. All right, so here are some famous power series representations. Uh, we won't need to have these memorized uh, but it is uh, nice to remember some of them, particularly say e to the x sine of x and cosine of x. And we'll be using those uh, in another example soon. So if we try to do arithmetic with power series, that is possible. Uh, fortunately, when we're, we're trying to do uh, uh, Multiplication or division, we'll see that we're only interested in the first few terms. When we do addition or subtraction, we would like to be able to find at least some kind of formula for the uh, coefficients. And one way we can go about this, so here's an example where we have two power series. And um, it will be much simpler if I could uh, write these as a a single, using a single sigma notation. And the problem here is that, uh, first of all, the left series, it starts at uh, n equals 2. The exponent is n minus 2. So the very first um, term in this series is a constant. The second series, or the series on the right that's being subtracted off, doesn't have a constant. So uh, that would mean that um, you know, one way that I could handle that would be to go ahead and write the constant from the first series outside the sigma notation. And then the second thing I'd like to have is I'd like to have the uh, formula for the exponent in each sum be the same. So then it'll be, I can combine the like terms easily. And then the second thing that that would in, entail is having the starting index being the same. So before we get to that, let's just go ahead and uh, write out the first few terms of each of the series. And then we could combine those in like terms here. So I have, I have this constant, which only comes from the first series. Every other term has a contribution from both series. And so I can combine the like terms. And I could look for a pattern here. But the other way that I can do this is I could say, well, look, let me start over here with k equals 0, knowing that the constant term now has been written out separately. If this starts with k equals 0, and I want to start then with x to the power of 1, then I should have an exponent of k plus 1. And then over here in the right hand, 
I don't really need to change anything except for maybe change the n to a k because then I'm starting with k equals zero. The first exponent will be k plus one. Now, if I replace n minus two with k plus one, that means k equals n minus three or n equals k plus three. So I'm gonna go ahead and have to shift or replace the n, any place I see an n, I'll have to replace it with a k plus three. Now, when I do that, then each of these sums will start with k equals zero. Each of the exponents will be k plus one. And so after I've changed the n to k plus three, n minus one would be k plus two. The subscript here would be k plus three. Over here, I've just changed the n to k. So that's k here. And then the power is x to the power of k plus one. Same power in each sum, I can factor that out. And now I've got a nice relationship among the uh, coefficients. And so uh, here's my sum of the power series. Now multiplication of power series is uh, a lot more work uh, if you're going to try to find a formula for the coefficients. But in our work, that's not our goal. Our goal would be to look at the first two, three, at most four terms, and then draw a conclusion or get the information that we want from that. So the way I started this is I just uh, used the di uh, distributive property. I took one times the entire series and then x times the entire series and x squared over two factorial times the entire blue series and x cubed over three factorial. And I wrote them in separate rows and lined up the same powers of x and then essentially collected the like terms. And so, uh, like I said, we're not gonna try to find a formula for the coefficients. In our work, we'd be interested in maybe the first three terms, possibly the first four terms. All right, so let's finish up with a preview of what we're gonna try to do in our analysis of differential equations and power series solutions. So here's a very simple differential equation. Uh, we could probably solve it by inspection. Certainly we have multiple means for solving this. We don't need to use power series, but let's just look at the steps that we will be using. So our first step is to assume that Y has a power series solution. And then we're gonna use that same form, so that same power series and take its first derivative, whatever derivatives we need for our differential equation. Here, we only need the first derivative. And then we can write this in the same summation notation, just using the power rule, but just remember that we have taken the derivative of C zero and that's derivative is zero. So there is no C sub zero term in the derivative in the y prime power series. Now let's substitute those into the differential equation. So I have my y prime plus y equals zero. And now let's uh, take a look here and see what's happening here. Uh, each of these are starting with the power x to the power of zero. So we each have a, each one of the series has a constant term. And so the only thing I'd like to do is make a change in the index to an, what we call an index shift so that we're both starting with the same index and the exponent uh, is going to have the same form in each of the power series. So here in, this, in the right-hand power series, I'm just gonna keep uh, you know, uh, the same form, but I'm just gonna replace the n with k. In the first power series though, I'd like to start with uh, k equals zero, and I'd like to have x to the power of k 
And so that would mean that k would have to equal n minus 1. All right, so let's make that replacement. Now I've got k equals 0. This would say that n equals k plus 1. So now this is c sub k plus 1 times k plus 1 x to the power of k. And then over in the right-hand power series, I still have ck times x to the power of k. So same power of k, same starting index, means that I can combine this into a single summation. And the coefficients then would be, well, factoring out the x sub k, I would have c sub k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus ck. That is the coefficient on x to the power of k. Now, since that equals 0, then that means that this expression in the brackets has to equal 0. And I can solve that for ck plus 1, and that gives me negative ck over k plus 1. So in other words, my coefficients in the solution to this differential equation satisfy this relationship. It's called a recurrence relationship. And so let's calculate some of the first coefficients. Now notice that uh, the first coefficient, c sub 0, uh, is arbitrary. So that's going to be a free parameter. It's not going to be fixed. It's going to be independent. But all of the other coefficients are going to depend on c0. So for example, c1, if I just put k equals um, got this off. It should be k equals 0 here. Okay, so if I put k equals 0 into this, I can see that c1 is going to be negative c0 over 1. And then now this is actually k equals 1. So c2 is negative c2 over 2. But then I can replace, use my formula here for c1. And that's going to reduce to positive c naught over 2 times 1. And then this is actually k equals 2. So c3 is negative c2 over 3. That's what the formula says. But I found that c2 is positive c0 over 2 times 1. So combining those together, c3 is negative c0 over 3 times 2 times 1. Right. And so again, so this is actually going to be k equal to 3. And we'll find that c sub 4 is going to be positive c naught over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And so finally, here's k equals 4. I'll just find that c5 is, uh, well, negative 1 to the power of 5. And I'm writing it this way so that we can have a general formula for our coefficients. And so it would be negative 1 to the power of 5 over 5 factorial times c0. So for a general k, c sub k is going to be negative 1 to the power of k over k factorial times c0. Now, this is a rare case because we know that there is a closed form solution so we sh now have this formula for our coefficients. And so our solution would be our arbitrary constant, c naught, times the sum k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k over k factorial times x to the power of k. And that is the power series representation of e to the negative x. And so our power series representation must agree with our closed form solution, and it does. So we're going to start to see how we can solve uh, some more differential equation in our next videos.